Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced and welcome to another video on learning data stuff. So again, we're going to continue our journey with um, Apache Spark. And again, just as a reminder, Apache Spark is a MPP or Massively Parallel Processing System. So that means jobs are processed across multiple computers. In our situation, we are doing a OneNode setup. So literally the Docker container that we set up is the master and the worker. And we actually even have our... Um, Jupyter Notebook server running on that same computer so that way we can easily communicate with the Spark server without us having to deal with like different IP addresses and configurations, trying to make this as simple as possible. So what we're going to do is create a new notebook because the purpose of this video, we're not going to quite get into Apache Iceberg yet. I just want to kind of get you, give you a feel for how uh, Apache, uh, not Apache Spark kind of functions. So we're going to create a new notebook. So we'll just click here to create a new Python notebook. Okay, and now the code that I'm gonna be using, you can find, if you look in the video description, there's a link to a repository where I put all the code that I use in these videos uh, for reference, so you can find that there. I'm gonna just bring this right over. So, okay, so first I want to grab this code here, and we'll talk it through. Because what I wanna do here is that I want to show you the two ways that Spark works. So Spark, allows you to send work to be done by the Spark cluster that can either be done through the data frame API. So you can basically use more imperative type Python code to sit there and say, hey, let's create a data frame. I want to do these specific things to it, manipulate it in these specific ways, or using a more declarative approach using SQL, okay, which you can also do with Spark. So you can use SQL or uh, data frame type structures. So first, let's just show you how you create a data frame. Okay, so in this case, what I did here is in, we import what we need from PySpark. PySpark is already installed in this container, so there's no need to do like a pip install PySpark for this particular environment. Um, basically, this builder right here, what we're doing is we're creating a Spark session. So basically, we're saying, hey, we want to go send directions to Spark. So we're going to send the instructions to Spark to say, hey, we're going to be sending you some directions. So we're going to create a new session, and that session has to have a name. And the reason that is, is that cluster could be receiving many different sessions from other people because it might be a, a cluster used by many people. So you would want to see, hey, your job is th the details for your job on the UI because Spark does have a UI for monitoring jobs and you would see it under the name that you give it. Okay, this get or create allows you to, again, establish that session. So it's going to take a look at the name you gave it, the configurations you passed. If a session that's already handling this job exists, it's going to use that session. But if it doesn't, it'll create a new one. That's why it's get or create. Now we want to create a data frame. So what we're going to do first is let's just start off with something to turn into a data frame. In this case, we're going to start off with rows. Okay, so your more traditional table like setup where the data is structured as a bunch of rows. So we have an array of rows where each person has a name and an age. Okay, so basically we have these, these tuples here where each person has a name and an age. Okay, in a row object. Okay. Then next, what we're going to do is we're going to take that row based structure and then pass it to this create data frame uh, function, which will actually take those rows and turn them into columns. Okay, and again, this is just one way you could read, you could be, we could be reading from uh, already existing files, um, pulling from connecting to databases and pulling in the data that way, and then passing whatever data we have to this create data frame function to create a data frame. And that data frame then gets saved as DF. So typically you see a variable called DF just means data frame. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print the data frame. So any data frame has a show function that prints out the data frame, pretty straightforward. Shows you the data frame. So if we run this code, so I'll go up to the first line, hit run, let the code run. Okay, it's good. so you can see it's taking a second, do do do. And see, this is the output of like the Spark session starting. So sometimes that might take a second. Um, when we get to Iceberg, you'll see that might take a second because it's going to be loading all sorts of libraries and doing all sorts of configurations. There's the data frame. So you see that the Spark is, is processing the job. That's what that marker there was, was pretty quick. And then we have the resulting data frame. Okay. So right now that Spark session is still open. Um, so now that's how I would write a data frame or create a data frame. And then this is how I would read that data frame to see what's inside of it. Okay. Now let's take a look at what if we wanted to use SQL. Okay. Now if I have a data frame and I want to use SQL with it, 
here's what I would do. I would take that data frame and I would want to create a view out of it. What this does, it tells Spark to treat it like a table. So in this case, um, I'm saying, hey, treat this data frame, this data frame right here, as a table called people. And now going forward, I can now use SQL to run SQL against that namespace. So you see here, we can use this spark.sql function to then pass some SQL and see now I can refer to that people table, uh, which is just that data frame and express what I want to do with it as SQL. So in this case, select star from people where age is greater than 28. Okay, which will show me only people who are greater than 28. So it should only show me Bob and Charlie. Okay. And then that's where you basically this returns a data frame, but instead of saving that data frame to a variable, we're just going to chain off of it and show it. And then we'll show another query where we say, here's like the data frame version of the same thing. So like if you wanted to do, instead of using SQL to query that data frame, we could also do, use this filter function. And this filter function would then take an expression, which it would then apply. So in this case, we're saying, hey, you know, uh, show me anything where the, D, the data filters age property or age column is less, is greater than 28. And then show me the result. So it should give me the same result both times. And then once we're done with our Spark session so that we can tell Spark that we're done, we can do spark.stop. Okay, and then that'll tell Spark that the session has completed. So we can now run this cell. Okay, and now it's doing the data frame output. And you can see like whether I'm interacting it with it as a data frame or through SQL, I'm gonna get the same results. It's just whatever you're more comfortable with. Some people are more comfortable just writing Python. Some people are more comfortable writing SQL. Um, but you can generally do the same things with both. There's a lot of different functions built into Spark. The point of these videos isn't going to be necessarily get into every little function that's built into the data frame object. But to kind of get you kind of understanding the workflow, so that way you can then begin designing your engineering jobs and whatnot. So this gives you a little flavor for how Spark works and how easy it is to use PySpark, which all Python, all PySpark is, it's a Python library that allows us to write Python. And then that library would then translates that to whatever the proper instructions for the, the, the Spark cluster. Because again, the Spark cluster is actually Java. Written in Java, works on the Java virtual machine. Uh, if you wanted to write Spark jobs in Java or Scala, you could. But in this case, this gives an easy way for people who already know Python, which is a lot of people, a way to communicate with that Spark cluster without having to go learn Java or Scala. And which is the nice thing about PySpark. And if you ever wrote a Spark job in Java, it's not too far from this. It's pretty much the same flow. It's just it would be Java functions instead of Python functions. And you know, you'd have to declare some types and stuff, which you don't have to do in Python. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Now in the next video, we'll get a little bit deeper and start working with Iceberg and showing how that looks like. And um, yeah, I'll see you that in the next video. Ciao.